Highlights from the UN Climate Change Summit. The Virginia governor race is a win for Republicans. And is, let's go Brandon, hate speech? Then more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. The 26th UN Climate Change Conference of Parties, or COP26, is underway in Glasgow. COP26's goal is to bring parties together to accelerate action towards the goals of the Paris Agreement and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Highlights include over 100 countries vowing to end deforestation by 2030, which of course means... <laughs> Time to start hoarding toilet paper again. Fewer trees cut down means less paper. Actually, I don't know if that's true, but why risk it? Panic. Panic as if your cheeks depended on it. Those houses you TP'd on Halloween, get that back. And unwrap those mummy costumes. That's white gold you're just throwing away. And speaking of ancient royal creatures, Queen Elizabeth. The Queen appeared in a pre-recorded message and encouraged the world leaders to rise above the politics of the moment and take action on climate change. The Queen said protecting the environment is very important to her because the impact of the environment on human progress was a subject close to the heart of my dear late husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. She also has a vested interest in preserving the environment, since she doesn't want it to be ruined while she's still reigning as Queen a hundred years from now. That woman will outlive us all. Speaking of out-of-touch rich people, Jeff Bezos pledged $2 billion to protect the environment. This funding will come from his Bezos Earth Fund, which he says is committed to spending $10 billion this decade on conservation, restoration, and food transformation. Bezos told COP26, Nature is beautiful, but it is also fragile. I was reminded of this in July when I went into space with Blue Origin. We get it. You went to space. Jeez, he's more insufferable than those people who study abroad for a month in Europe and then come back with an accent and won't shut up about how we should convert to the metric system. Although I do believe Bezos is sincere in his effort to save the planet. After all, I'm sure he wants the Earth to be clean when he rules over it a hundred years from now. The Queen Elizabeth Jeff Bezos future wars are going to be intense. No matter who wins, one thing is for sure. Prince Charles will never be king. If all this climate talk has you feeling bored, President Biden agrees with you. He fell asleep during the COP26 opening speeches. Oh wait, he's awake again. And he's back asleep. We're just gonna fast forward these next 20 seconds until Biden is woken up by an aide. Well, that's one way of conserving energy, unlike flying across the Atlantic in your own private 747 to attend a meeting everyone could have just done over Zoom. Look, a lot of people are down on Biden for falling asleep, but I sympathize. I remember what it's like to sit through long, boring college lectures. So I have some advice, Mr. President. Get a pen and start doodling. For example, you could draw some sheep a species that will eventually go extinct unless world leaders take action. And then you could count how many sheep you've drawn and oh no. Yahoo has pulled out of China. They're citing an increasingly challenging business and legal environment. This was mostly a symbolic move as most of Yahoo's services were already censored in China. In a statement, Yahoo said it remains committed to the rights of our users and a free and open internet. In that case, this move makes sense. Maintaining a free and open internet in China is like trying to maintain a petting zoo in a lion's den. Yes, it's sad all those poor little sheep were eaten, but on the bright side, with fewer sheep to count, maybe the president will be able to stay awake during the next climate conference. More after the break. Welcome back. An Ohio House committee passed a bill that allows citizens to carry a concealed gun without receiving any training. This is similar to a Texas law that went into effect in September. And Ohio may be taking another page out of the Texas playbook. Two Republican legislators in Ohio introduced a Texas-style restriction on abortion 
that allows citizens to sue anyone receiving or helping to facilitate abortions. They did this despite the Texas law being currently reviewed by the Supreme Court. I'm saying this to Ohio, but this also goes for the rest of the nation. The only thing you should be taking from Texas is Whataburger. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, never go full Texas. That's one step away from going full Florida. And no one wants that. This past Tuesday was election day. In Virginia, Republican Glenn Youngkin won the race for governor against Democrat and former Governor Terry McAuliffe in a close election. This election was notable as it made Virginia relevant for something other than meth lab explosions. Virginia has actually been in the news a lot lately, as Loudoun County schools have become flashpoints for political issues such as critical race theory, mask mandates, and transgender rights. We've done videos on those topics, and you should check them out. And what's happening in Virginia schools had a huge impact on the election. More about that in a moment. But the governor's race became national news as a proxy for how well the Democrats are doing in office. McAuliffe was endorsed by Biden, whose poll numbers kept slipping, even among Democrats. Gee, I wonder why this guy's having trouble energizing his party. Youngkin was endorsed by Trump, although Trump was not exactly endorsed by Youngkin. Youngkin appeared to keep his distance. This race was seen as a preview for how Democrats might fare in midterm elections in 2022. Although if you wanted a preview for that, you didn't need to wait for this election. I could have told you months ago how the 2022 midterms will play out. Let me just take a look into my magic eight ball. Hey, would you look at that? Everyone will be angry and not much will change substantially. Not only is that accurate, but that would make it the most honest political party slogan of all time. I'd vote for that guy. I wouldn't be happy, but I at least wouldn't be disappointed. But if you're really wondering what the results of the Virginia governor's race say about Democrats' chances in the midterms, some experts consider this a bad omen, and that it's time for Democrats to panic. In Virginia, Republicans didn't just come from behind to win the governor's race. They also won the races for lieutenant governor and attorney general, and got a majority in the House of Delegates. So how are Democrats reacting? Are they looking inward, realizing they need to do better at serving their constituents, and reevaluating their game plan moving forward? Nope. President Biden says this race has nothing to do with him, and progressives and moderate Democrats are blaming each other for the loss. For those of you keeping count of the five stages of grief, that's denial and anger checked off, and this next part makes me skip bargaining and go straight to depression, because many Democrats are blaming racism for their loss. Yep, racism. That's the only explanation. That's the only way that Republicans were able to defeat Democrats in Virginia with racism. And racism is the reason that Republican Winsome Sears became the first woman of color to be lieutenant governor in Virginia? And Republican Jason Miares became the first Latino Virginia Attorney General. Yep, they couldn't possibly have won because people preferred them over the Democratic candidates. No, this black woman and this Latino man only won because Virginia voters are so racist. So what actually happened? Like I said earlier, the battle in the Loudoun County School District had a big impact. Voters in Virginia said education was their top priority. And McAuliffe did himself no favors during a debate when he said, I don't think parents should be telling schools what they should teach. Virginia schools pushed issues parents weren't comfortable with too hard, too fast, and then told them they know better when it comes to teaching their children. When you mess with people's kids, they'll vote against you, even if that means they have to vote Republican. And unless Democrats can accept that, it really might be time for them to panic. And after the break, what's going on with Let's Go Brandon? Welcome back. You've likely seen comment sections flooded with the expression, Let's Go Brandon. This one especially. And you may be wondering why so many people are saying the same thing you hear drunkenly shouted at every Little League game in the Midwest. Let's Go Brandon has become a euphemism for cursing at President Joe Biden. It stems from an interview with NASCAR driver Brandon Brown after he won an Xfinity Series race at Talladega on October 2nd. Moment. 
Brandon, you also told me, as you can hear the chants from the, the crowd. Let's go, Brandon. Let's go, Brandon. Brandon you told me you That's definitely not what they said. Either that reporter really couldn't hear well and made an honest mistake, or she's terrible at improv. Either way, this moment had big, no, they're saying boo earns energy. And the internet latched onto it as a meme. So anyone who's not a fan of, for example, Biden's vaccine mandates can show their displeasure by buying a Let's Go Brandon shirt or mask. Meanwhile, a Let's Go Brandon song from rapper Bryson Gray reached number one on iTunes. Gray suggested the reason his song hit number one is because of interest generated in it after it was deleted from YouTube over claims of medical misinformation. Was YouTube afraid the song would hurt Joe Biden's feelings? I'm sure he'll be okay, as long as no one wakes him up and tells him about it. YouTube censors aren't the only ones finding issue with the Let's Go Brandon chant. Some consider it a form of hate speech. And CNN political analyst Joe Lockhart compared this meme to coded statements from Nazis, the KKK, and ISIS. Yeah, because if there's anything these groups were known for, it was their memes. Everyone knows the KKK are huge SpongeBob fans. Their hoods are shaped like that because of how much they love Patrick. A Southwest Airlines pilot is under investigation for supposedly saying, let's go Brandon over the loudspeaker. Southwest said in a statement that Southwest does not condone employees sharing their personal political opinions while on the job. The company didn't divulge whether or not the pilot was suspended, but personally, I hope he's fired. Not for saying something political, but for trying to be funny. Any airline employee that does a corny stand-up routine during a flight should be fired, fined, and imprisoned. I'd rather listen to plain jokes from Al-Qaeda. What's the deal with airline food and the fact we're never taught how to land? And if you think it's unfair to compare the Southwest Airlines pilot to terrorists, then you're not this former FBI special agent who likens saying, let's go Brandon, with saying, long live ISIS. The chant, let's go Brandon, has made people go crazy. I personally think the reaction to it is absurd, considering it's the least offensive way Republicans have criticized a Democrat, or Democrats have criticized a Republican. The irony is that Let's Go Brandon finally got people to stop calling politicians they disagree with Nazis and terrorists, because the people who say Let's Go Brandon are now being called Nazis and terrorists. Why? Probably because the only reason Democrats could imagine someone not liking Joe Biden has to be racism. As Biden himself once said, If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Let us know in the comments below. And remember, America Uncovered is supported mainly by viewers. Be sure to visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered. Contribute a dollar or more per episode. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.